I've driven thousands of clicks to this one AI generated article and I'll share the process with you on how I rank AI content because when you generate content, there are two ways of doing it. Either you one click generate and hit publish or you do it the right way. But let me just start by saying that it is possible to rank content, which is just one click generate and hit publish. But it does require that there is a low competition and the keyword that you're targeting have a low search volume. But this is not a long term strategy because as soon as someone comes in and write a better piece of content, they will overtake you. If you just need traffic here now, it could be a strategy. Or as we've seen some case studies where people, they generate thousands of articles to get topical authority immediately. But it's just not long term, it's short term. And the process I'm going to show you today is a more long term strategy where you will rank for longer time. So if you're bulk publishing at the moment, you're probably using this method where you just one click generate and you hit publish which is super easy and take no time. But just remember, if something is super easy and takes no time for you, it most likely is the same terms for everyone. And that's why it's easy for everyone. It takes no time. And that's why you won't rank in the long term. It's always the people that take it a step further who will actually outrank you. But now let me share my process, which is the right way of ranking AI content. And it starts in your mindset because I still one click generate content, but I treat it as a draft. And that's the same you need to tell yourself. This is a draft that I need to improve and to improve it. I have a five step process. I take every piece of content through. The first thing I do is research and for researching, I use both forums, but I also use Google. So on Google, I take the first three to five results that are ranking for the keyword. Then I use the detailed Chrome extension to pull all the H2s so I know what subjects I need to cover. And then I basically make a superset. I put it into ChatGPT and then I ask ChatGPT to remove all the duplicates. So now I have a superset of the headings that I need to cover. And often each heading is a subject. And sometimes you have to go through it manually because when a subject is semantically related, it's not always a ChatGPT knows that it's a duplicate. But now with all the covers in the list, I go to step two, which is generating the AI content. And here I use Koala, where I simply enter the target keyword, I enable key takeaways, and I use the point of view second person. So I feel that I'm talking to the reader. It's so important that the person reading this piece of content feels that it's written to them. I also enable the outline editor, which we will need in the second step. And then I also enable internal link building. This means that Koala has already crawled my website via the sitemap. So it knows all of my URLs and it will automatically link to my content within the piece of content that we are actually generating now. And when these things are filled out, then I click create article. And then I'm shown with the outline editor. And in the outline editor, I compare that to the superset of headings that I have to ensure that all the headings over here are part of the outline editor in Koala. So I cover all the subjects. And when I'm sure of that, then I click generate. And now I have the first draft of my piece of content, which we need to improve. And that brings me to the third step where I take all of the content from Koala and I put it into phrase, which is my preferred content optimization tool. And what I start with here is that I fix all the grammar issues because even though AI has generated it, there are still some grammar issues that Grammarly finds. Next up, then I ensure that I cover the most important NLP keywords. You don't have to cover all of them, but Google is looking for consensus when it is that they rank specific pages. So we need to cover some of it and then we need to add our own experience, which I'll come back to. And then I often rewrite the intro because ChatGPT is just not that good at writing an introduction. And it's so important for me that it target pain points from the target group. And you can ask ChatGPT for these pain points to include in your intro because your intro should not only target pain points, it should also include your own expertise and experience. So people reading, they can relate to the pain points and they trust you because you have expertise and experience. So as this blog post is about visiting Copenhagen on a budget, an introduction could sound like this. Copenhagen is an expensive city to visit, but it's beautiful and can be done on a budget. So don't disregard it just yet. I've lived in Copenhagen my whole life, so I've collected my tips on how to experience Copenhagen on a budget. So you can see it targets the pain point where it is expensive to visit the city and it shows that I have experience because I am living there and I know tips that I'm including in my blog post on how you can experience Copenhagen on a budget. Next up, I created an FAQ section based on the research from Phrase where I get content from Quora, Reddit and Google itself. And then I usually choose between three to five questions, which are highly related to the 
topic that I'm writing about, and then I answer those questions. And this is really for the reader. It's not so much for Google. It's for the reader who wants a quick answer to their question. The last thing I do is to improve the readability. And here I have maximum two and a half lines per section of text. And I know I could add this in Koala, but I just like to have the own control that I do it myself because it's just much more simple and it doesn't restrict the way that Koala actually writes the content. And with that in order, it's now time for step four where I add my own experience. And this is the most important step because now it's time for information gain. Now it's time for me to show my experience and expertise both to the reader, but also to Google. Google loves new content, content it hasn't seen before, and only I can do that. And AI is just summarizing the web, but I can bring new content. That's what I need to do with this piece of content. So what I like to do is read the entire blog post from start to finish. And every time there is a section I feel I can expand on, then I do that. It could be that in this specific example, there might be some restaurants which are super cheap but serves delicious food and it's not part of the article. I could add those restaurants and I could describe how the atmosphere is, what my favorite dish is on the menu card. So every time I add these types of sentences where I said, I did this and XYZ happened or based on my experience, you know, it's not only the words that Google is looking for, but it's the reader who is actually getting a personalized experience based on your experience. And that's what's so important. Always read the content through from start to end and then everywhere you can add your own experience. That's also why it's so important to write content about elements where you have experience because everyone can just generate a piece of content and then publish it and it will have no soul, no experience, nothing at all. But by doing this, where well, you actually take it a step further, read the content through and add your own experience, that's when Google, they experience information gain and they want to rank that because it's something new for the reader. The last step is uploading it to my website and I'm using WordPress so it's super simple. I just copy and paste all the text from phrase into WordPress. I re-upload the images and I ensure that all the images has correct file names that reflect what is on the image. And then I also add the alt text. And then I use Rank Math SEO for my SEO plugin. And here I just make sure to fill out all the meta tags. I ensure that the social media presence is okay. I insert schema, which often happens automatically with Rank Math, but for the FAQ section, I have to do it manually. And then I just wait after I hit publish. And then after a month or so, I circle back and I see all the data from Google Search Console. I find all the keywords where I get impressions, but no clicks. And then I add content about those keywords. So this is done manually. You can ask ChatGPT to write something about a specific keyword, but ChatGPT doesn't always know the context. Of course, you can paste in your entire article, but again, it's just not your own experience. I like to just add this text manually where I cover the keywords. Sometimes it's just a generic keyword and you can use ChatGPT, but I prefer to just write it manually. And that's it. That's how I rank AI content. It's not as easy and fast forward as people think it is. And if you want fast and easy, then go with the one-click generate and hit publish. I don't recommend it. Another way you could do is to use the one-click generate, hit publish, and then wait 30 days to get data in Google Search Console and then improve it from there. But I don't recommend that either because you don't have a great starting point. I like the 80% there rule. So I write content, which I like 80%, and then I publish it. And the last 20%, I optimize based on the content from Google Search Console because that's feedback from the reader so I can improve the content. And I've only touched the surface of what Koala is capable of. So if you want to see a full in-depth review of Koala, then you can do that right up here. Thank you for watching. See you on the next one.